This presentation will cover the request and workflow topics for the Hewlett Packard Project and Portfolio Management System. An understanding about the configuration, functions, and capabilities of the system is critical by the implementation and support teams before they start gathering requirements. The development and conversion of existing artifacts and data elements into this enterprise integrated application suite must satisfy many users with different perspectives and roles based on a common set of artifacts. Additional artifacts, details, and presentations related to process modeling, systems implementation, project management, and HPPPM are available at CIMPLEBS.com. This is a typical user homepage dashboard. The My Requests, My Tasks, and My Timesheets portlets automatically gather all of the enterprise information to which you have a stakeholder role and responsibility. You'll notice in the My Request portlet currently displayed is a project issue, a project risk, and a project scope change request. Each of these is a request type, as are projects, proposals, defects, product enhancements, and any other request type you may deploy. Each request type has its own form, data elements, and workflow. The request is the primary building block of the system and determines the effectiveness of the conversion of data into actionable management information. The functionality we will review today applies to all request types. The system administrator can create a new request or elaborate an existing request through the workbench and must set basic control and security parameters within these configurable elements prior to deployment. Each request listed in the portlet will include a link to the access to the underlying data form. Let's take a look. Select Issue 30722. The project issue is displayed. The request number, which is a unique system index issued key, is included in the header as well as the summary section. The first thing you notice are the big orange workflow step exit buttons. You will only see these buttons if you are authorized to promote or move the request to the next step of its workflow. The workflow is the backbone of the system and facilitates progress management, communications, and collaboration across the enterprise. More on workflows later. Also in the header is the request description field and the current workflow step status that this request is in. This status field is critical in that it may control the fields you are able to see and edit in combination with other security cat settings. So you might be able to edit a field in one step and then only view it in the next, depending on your stakeholder role and system licenses. The request is divided into sections, the top being the header, which includes the summary section, followed by detail sections. Each section contains fields. There are view-only fields. Keep in mind these characteristics may change by workflow steps. There are free text fields of different sizes. Bear in mind that best practices supply request types already contain the expected normal fields for each request type. You, the system administrator, can add up to 100 fields to a request as part of the workbench configuration, and you can add any of these fields type. Required fields are indicated by a red asterisk preceding the field name. You will not be able to save the request unless these fields are populated. The fields with the gray boxes at the end of the entry field are menu driven. You must select an existing optional value from a drop down list or search for the desired value. This is a typical resource or person search box. There are 1000 plus validation lists referred to as validation lists provided in the installed system, all of which are editable and new ones can be added. The question mark icon is the online help. This must be defined by the implementation or system management team based on your processes, artifacts, fields, and organizations. They can be as detailed as necessary and include links to templates, procedures, and other external documents. They are blank out of the box. In the upper left-hand corner of every request type is a printable version link, which will return the printed format to your screen with a print button. Many of the views, portlets, and reports include options to export to Excel, as well as PDF format reports. As you scroll down on any request, you'll come to the Notes section. Typically, anyone can add a note in any step, except completed or canceled, and the author's name and a date time stamp are added. Field changes and workflow exit required notes can also be included in this Notes section. Below the Notes section is the Reference section. You can add links to SharePoint documents, external websites, or HPPPM objects. If you create a project issue from within a project, the issue will be reflected in the project references, and the project will be added to the issue references. If you attach the document, a copy of the document at that point is saved, so it's a type of version control. 
If you attach a link, then you will always be taken to the current version. Just above the notes section is the status section. This section is tied to the request type workflow. In its simplest form, each step name is a verb and a noun and defines what is the work associated with that step. Gather requirements, define proposal, test code, plan project. Typically, each step represents a change in organizational responsibility for completing the effort or a significant milestone in the progress of the request. As each step is executed, email notifications can be sent to the stakeholders. Each step also has a unique step status. This name should reflect the objective of the step or the state of the request, like high-level estimation, enterprise prioritization, resource planning. This is one of those fields that has lots of built-in designed behavior and functionality. Most portlets and reports rely heavily on the step status to provide filtering and sorting of records. Most importantly, the status name is a control element through which field-level security can be set and managed. This multifunction purpose requires careful and balanced consideration for naming statuses. The status section lists the steps included in the workflow. There may be some steps that are not displayed and are not end user controlled. For each step, the audit trail is reported that reflects who moved the request out of each step and exactly when that transition occurred. The graph will review link at the bottom of the section will reveal the complete workflow and reflects the progress and audit trail information as well. This is the workflow for a proposal request. You can add the necessary steps and transitions required to reflect the associated business process which is being facilitated by the request. The current step is highlighted. Changes to the workflow can only be made by the system administrator through the workbench. Changes to workflows are made for all requests using that particular workflow. The gear icon represents an execution type step, which means system work is being done in the background. In this case, the project is being created and all the field values are being auto-populated into the project details tab of the project. You can copy files, migrate code from dev to QA to do environmental refreshes and many other technology executions. The most important artifact in the development of an effective business process is a fully defined process model. In its final form, it will become the workflow, but the complete definition of each step will define most of the request and workflow configuration and associated system security as well. While the process diagram must indicate the steps, sequence, and responsible stakeholder, there are many other data elements associated with each step to ensure that all of the steps and only the steps required are included. This is the project work breakdown structure approach to defining the work to deliver an objective. This particular diagram also reflects the HP PPM data objects associated with each step. More developed versions of this approach are available on the website. What are the requirements to be gathered for each step in the process? The first is the answer to the question, what? What needs to be accomplished at this step of the process? The what defines the output, the artifact, that thing which provided you will know you have accomplished the objective of the step and you're ready to proceed to the next. In the case of our proposal process, the first step is to register the idea, documents its objectives and benefits to the business, customer, or service. Concurrently, you need to identify all of the stakeholders that will be impacted by the change, either implementing the change or affected by the new process, service, or product. The second requirement is the answer to the question, why? The first two questions must be developed concurrently for each step. Why do we need to do this activity? Again, this is a question related to the business process, not the content, not the proposal at this point, but the registration of any proposal. Why are you defining the idea, its value and benefits, and who is involved and impacted in order to bring the idea into existence? The answer to the question why can always be validated in a subsequent step. If you have to do it in order to complete the process effectively and efficiently, then the step is justified. If the output, information, and or decisions have no bearing on the completion of the process, then it's not a valid step. That's not to say it doesn't need to be done, but it should be considered a byproduct or requirement of the process, not a step within the process. In the case of our proposal, the purpose of this first step is to ensure that all stakeholders are informed and invited to collaborate on the development of the idea. The risk associated with finding unexpected and unknown impacts and the consequences of those discoveries are greatly reduced by ensuring the appropriate socialization of the idea. The third requirement is the answer to the question, how? How do we accomplish the objective of this step? How do we plan it, organize it, and accomplish the mission? The how is the approach and task list for execution. In the case of our proposed process, proposal process, 
Step one, this is exactly why you implement an enterprise change management system, because it is a system. Its purpose is to provide that consistent, efficient, well-documented, and communicated process for repetitive executions. Each request type in this system is designed to provide exactly the same benefits for a different, specific, repetitive work management process. So what's the approach? Enter your idea into the system, guess at the impacted stakeholders, and let the system communicate the idea to each, with an understanding that they are being asked to collaborate on the definition, assessment, and identification of additional stakeholders where appropriate. As the what and why need to be addressed concurrently, as the answers to each question may change the understanding and answer to the other, so to the how and the who question. Having already defined what you're trying to accomplish and why, it will become evident as to how the step should be accomplished. The what and how should also provide a reliable clue as to who should or who can successfully accomplish the step objective. The knowledge domain as well as the beneficiary domain have been identified. So the area of expertise, or at least experience, will dictate candidate qualifications. For our proposal process, first step, the who would typically be the proposal sponsor. Whose idea is this? They obviously know something about the opportunity or problem. That's not to say that they own the definition, management, or any other step of the process. Each step in each process must have someone, an individual by name or process stakeholder role, responsible for the successful completion of the step. Each new step may, and probably should, have a new responsible party. Or perhaps it's not really two steps. Until you have executed the initial socialization step and communicated the idea, it may not be obvious, or you may find the primary beneficiary and impacted stakeholders are different than expected. The last question, although not the last requirement for our purposes, is the when. We've already established we need to do this, and then it precedes some downstream utilization of the step product or deliverable. But do we need to do it now, or can it wait? Is there a cost for waiting? Should it be done concurrently with some other step? like the network diagram of deliverables to determine the appropriate sequencing of tasks within a project schedule, process steps should be sequenced and synchronized to minimize the overall effort where possible, don't do work you don't need to do, and do not create new work. For some process steps, the win will be obvious. For our proposal, it's not a proposal and no one knows about it until it is registered. If you start the next step before finishing this one, your risk of efficient success is lowered. The time frame and throughput are increased greatly and the risk of missing significant stakeholders goes up as well. There will be processes with multiple concurrent paths. The first objective is to do no unnecessary work. The second should be to do no work earlier than necessary. This is the just-in-time approach. While this may not be intuitive, in the world of change management everything is changing constantly. The effort you spend detailing a solution that will be implemented in six months is very likely to change before you start the implementation. The goal is to accomplish each step so that the overall process throughput and resource effort is maximized and that no effort is obsoleted prior to being utilized. Thank you for reviewing this presentation on the foundations, requests, and workflows of the Hewlett Packard Project and Portfolio Management System. These features have not changed much since version 6.5 and are accurate through version 9.1. The approach to elaborate the business process definition into system configuration specifications that enable a clear trail from user requirements through the test plan and into the delivered request implementation is presented in the BPE for HPPPM, the process, presentation. Your comments and suggestions are greatly appreciated. Please forward them to simplebs at gmail.com. Thank you.